Hey, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. My name is Brian. You're watching Flannel Farms. One of the biggest problems with having a homestead and animals is water. Now you might not be able to tell by looking at it, but this is a $12,000 hole in the ground. That is our deep well. It does run on power. We are not off gridders. Not yet. We're also not really preppers. We just like to make our own food and be a little more self-sustaining. Our property does not have a natural source of water. And this is a problem because that's my well house back there. And that's my house house right there. Way over yonder that way is our vegetable garden. Way over yonder that way is our crop garden and our flower garden and our cows and our pigs. Don't get stuck humping hoses like we are. We have something like a thousand feet of hoses. And any time the weather gets like it is now, where it's not raining, who knows why? If you believe in global warming, maybe it's that. We absolutely believe in climate change. I just don't think we're responsible. Or chemtrails, or diversion of rivers, or Donald Trump getting indicted. I don't know, pick whatever reason why, but it's not raining right now. And this is a big problem because we stand to lose our crop garden, our flower garden, and our vegetable garden. So today we're gonna have to water, and watering is a pain in the neck, as you're gonna see. Well, that's it and just about perfect. Look at that. Here's part of my problem, folks. That's one garden. That's my vegetable garden. I've still got a sweet corn crop, dent corn, mangle beets, squash. The sunflowers are just gonna have to make do. And our flower garden. And I only have one sprinkler. Now, I have another sprinkler right here somewhere. I don't know where it went. But this is only 15 acres. Imagine if I had 30. Now my house is set 900 feet back from the road. So I probably have a thousand feet of hosing on this property stretching all over hither and yon. Now, what's the solution to that, you say? Well, there's several. And before you go there, I know somebody's already probably typed it in the comments section. Why don't you just use rainwater and capture that and use it? Two very good reasons. One, that's not as easy as it sounds. From my house that already has gutters on it, yeah, a couple rain barrels, that's not a big deal. Out in the middle of a field, that's a whole different ball game. So now I have to build some sort of catchment roof structure or rain catchment center. And then I have to have tanks to hold it, which need to be off the ground if we're gonna use water pressure to power the water through the hose lines, or you need power out there to run a pump, or you need a battery operated pump, or you need a solar pump. That's a lot of infrastructure, a lot of time, and a lot of money which could be used elsewhere. For example, we could trench out there. But again, we're talking about trenching 900 feet and you don't wanna use that plastic stuff, at least not where we are, the black plastic. You wanna use good solid PVC and that's expensive. So is the trenching machine. The other problem I have with trenching is my wells back there, right, right down the driveway which means I'd have to trench through rock, which is not a good way to trench, or the woods all the way out to, I don't know, several hundred feet, which again, suboptimal. So there's a third option that we have here because we don't have a natural water source. And the third option is to drill another well or dig it. Now, as you guys know, if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, we like to show you what we hope to do, and then as time goes on, we show you what we actually do. We showed you that with our feed in the previous video. We had done a video about how to find feed, and then we did a video where we actually did it ourselves and proved the concept. So what I would like to do is way out there in my cow field, I'd like to dig a well myself by hand and then add a pump to it and potentially a solar generator and then build a little pump house for it. And what that would do would be allow me to keep hoses out of the weather, not have things freeze, and most of my crops and stuff are that way. So then I would only be running hoses a few hundred feet. And to be honest, in the winter time, I'm not terribly concerned about watering crops, but I still have to water my animals. And these hoses have been freezing in the winter time. 
And we end up running them over a lot because they have to go across the driveway, which means I end up repairing hoses a lot. So, do yourself a favor if possible when you purchase your homestead. Natural water source would be amazing, a stream, something like that, where you can make the flow happen for yourself. Make sure you have a good water supply. That well we have is a great water supply. It's really good. But the logistics of having to get it 900 feet to where animals are, that's difficult. Of course, there's always the fourth option, which is you bring your animals up closer to the house, which is what our ancestors used to do. For that matter, they used to live with them in the house. <laughs> They'd sleep on top and the animals below. If everything's close, you don't have to worry about it. But when you're growing an acre worth of animal feed, vegetables, flowers, and such, sometimes those things need water. And the fifth option is just pray it rains. We are hobby farmers, so our livelihood does not depend on any of those crops or the animals. If all of this went away, I still have a job. But my farming friends, they're not so fortunate. So, we'll see what we can do. I got more hoses to stretch, and I've got more crops to water. Thanks for joining me here today at Flannel Farms. I appreciate it. If you haven't already, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Share it with your friends if you think they might need it. Keep growing as you grow. We'll see you next time. Bye.